In July of 1996, Lance was ready to take on the Tour de France again, but he had to drop out of the race after only five days. He was having trouble breathing. On his 25th birthday in September, a blinding headache sent him home early from a concert, and there were other symptoms that kept nagging at him. But he refused to tell anyone until Wednesday, October 2nd, when he called his doctor. The doctor showed Lance a chest x-ray because the cancer had already spread to his lungs. There were 12 tumors there, the size of golf balls. The next morning, October 3rd, Lance underwent surgery to remove the cancerous testicle. Usually, testicular cancer is very curable, but Lance was in the worst possible stage. Doctors thought the odds were against him. Clearly, he had less than a 50% chance of surviving his illness based on the distribution of the disease at the time of diagnosis. On Thursday, October 24th, 1996, three weeks after he was first diagnosed with cancer, Lance entered the hospital for brain surgery. The surgeon was able to get all of the tumors, but the race of Lance's life was just beginning. He faced three more rounds of chemotherapy. I was scared that he that I might be going to his funeral or something in, in the not too distant future. But when you were with him, you didn't get that sense from him. One way that Lance motivated his friends and himself was by continuing to ride during chemotherapy. But in the next couple of weeks, the worst side effects kicked in. Lance collapsed during a training ride. He didn't stop riding his bicycle until the day he laid down in a stranger's yard and thought he might die there. On December 13th, 1996, Lance had his last round of chemotherapy. The drugs were eating away at his muscles now, and the anti-nausea medication exhausted him. Yet that month, Lance got the news he'd been waiting for. The treatments had worked. His cancer was in remission. By Christmas 1996, Lance knew that he was inching ahead in the race for his life.